befuddled on how to live the life of Christianity as well as how to ascertain the many blessings that God has already laid out for us. Amen. And I'm here to tell you that the word of God beyond a shadow of a doubt from the beginning all the way to the end. Where it says uh, a genuine leather all the way to the other side. Please understand me. The whole Bible has always been about the love of God. Are you listening to me? If you pay close attention to the word of God you, you, in, in the book of Genesis, you'll find out that the, the, the word of God is literally unfolding before us a, a 6,000 year old love story. Amen. Between a, 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 a groom and a bride, before they consummated their marriage, you know, the bride was seduced by the devil, and then she committed whoredom, she committed all kind of defilements and everything else, and then the groom came back to the bride and said, you know what, I know what you did, but I forgive you, and I can't stop loving you, because to stop loving you, I, it would be st me stop loving myself. And he said, matter of fact, I'm going to forgive you for everything that you did. No matter how long you were out there, I'm still going to forgive you for everything that you did. And not only am I going to not, I'm going to forgive you, but I'm never going to bring it up ever again. Saints, that's the grace of God. That is the whole concept of the Bible. And that is the, that's what is the undercurrent of the whole Bible. It has always been about love. Amen. And once we as born-again believers can understand that that's the whole concept and the premises by which the Bible stands upon, then we'll begin to see what it is that we're desiring to see from being in the Word of God. Amen? Listen to this. In order for us to begin to see the things that we're believing God for, in order for us to receive wholeness, in order for us to receive peace, in order for us to receive everything that we desire in life, we as born-again believers have to become sure-footed about what we're doing. We have, the Word of God has to become our bedrock. Amen? Because a lot of times we can try to make other things our bedrock. We can try to make the government our bedrock. We can try to make our parents our bedrock. We can try to do these different things. But please understand me, the Word of God must become our foundation as born-again believers, and we have to become sure-footed about the Word of God. In other words, you got to get to the point in the Word of God to where now you know in your knower what the Word of God says, because when you know it in your knower, that's when you begin to walk it out. And the church said, the only way that we begin to walk out the Word of God is that the Word of God has to far exceed head knowledge. A lot of times people say, well, I read the Bible 50 times. Well, goody for you. How much of it are you walking out in the name of Jesus? Amen. And that's what we got to get to because until we get to the point to where head knowledge becomes heart knowledge, then there's no walking it out. We won't see the manifestation of what it is that we're believing God for because it's only in our head. Amen. Belief must not only be in your head. We believe in Jesus, but do you really believe in Jesus? Are you listening to me? Is he really on the inside of you, glory to God, to where you're no longer compromising the word of God? Is he all on the inside of you? Has he invaded every fiber of your being, glory to God? That's how much he has to be on the inside of you. Because the devil who goes about as a mighty roaring lion, please understand me, he wants to solicit you with demonic solicitation and fool you into thinking that you were not included in the finished works of Christ. What he did at Calvary, please understand me, he his hands were stretched out and he said, it is finished. Somebody say that with me. It is is finished. Please understand me. When he said that it was finished, he meant that all your needs were met according to his riches and glory. He said he'll bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. He said that you will be delivered. You will be made whole from the inside out. So we don't have to look for anything on the outside. Why? Because when you got born again and received Christ, with Christ came everything else that you need. But we got to get that to the point to where now it's just not head knowledge. But now it has become heart knowledge. And now that it has become heart knowledge, it has adjusted my conduct, glory to God. It's adjusted my behavior, glory to God. 
Are you listening to me? To where now I think like I'm supposed to think. I speak like I'm supposed to speak. And I do what I'm supposed to do. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. Amen. Contrary to popular belief, Christianity is not about right behavior. Christianity is about right believing. When you believe right, you act right. And the church said, you got to hear that by the Spirit. And that's what the Word of God, we're trying to get to the point to where we know the Word to such a point to where we're not compromising the Word of God, we're walking out the Word of God, to where now it's amplifying our witness. Every born-again believer has a witness. But whether or not your witness is amplified has everything to do with whether or not your head knowledge has become heart knowledge. Amen? Are you listening to me this morning? Now this morning I want to teach on a message that is entitled, Know It in Your Knower. Amen? And I want to go ahead by defining the word know. What does the word know? You know, I looked it up in the Miriam Dictionary and everything else, but I think I had to help out Miriam just a little bit now. Just a little bit. And I want you to hear this definition. Know, to know means to become acutely aware of something through intimate and consistent observation and or practice. To become acutely aware of something through intimate and consistent observation and or practice. Please understand me. The word, know, the word uh, uh, know is the root word to the word knowledge. Amen. Which is actually a compound word. It comes from two words, knowing edge. In other words, depending on what you know will give you the edge. Amen. So I want you to turn with me, if you will, to the book of Hosea, chapter 4. And I want to get into this, and I want to just build a little foundation and just give you what it is that the Lord has put on my heart this morning. We're living in a time to where uh, there is a shaking going on. It's like the devil has grab hold of the tree and he's shaking believers. Are you listening to me? And we have to become anchored in the things of God. We have to begin to see the manifestation of what God wants us to see in this in his earth realm. We have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the culmination of time is upon us. Because if you don't know that in your knower, please understand me, then we'll continue to do what the people were doing when Noah told them that it was going to rain. Amen. We're going to still be partying. We're still going to be doing what we're doing, not paying attention on the Internet, doing things we don't have any business doing because we're not paying attention. We don't know the season, and I'm here to tell you by the Spirit of God that we are at the culmination of time right now. Amen. Everybody in the book of Hosea? In the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, it reads this way. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, he's talking to the priest, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no more priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Now you got to listen in, you got to, you got to hone in on something real good now, because when you're reading the word of God, it is imperative that you are rightly dividing the Word of God. And the reason why that is is because a lot of times when people see the law of God and the law of Moses, they use those laws as synonymously, and it was never intended to be synonymous. Amen? The law of Moses and the law of God are two different laws. You're talking about the law of God transcends the Old Testament and transcends into the New Testament. Amen? The law of Moses ended at the Old Testament, and the church said, in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 10, it talks about both laws, the law of God as well as the law of Moses in the same text, in the same scripture. And what they're doing, they're drawing a distinction. The reason why that's important, because one of those laws is based on the love of God, and another law is based on behavior. And the church said, the Mosaic law is based on how you act, and how you act will determine what you get. Amen? But God says, no, no, because you're not teaching my law, he says, my people perish. What is my law? My law is the law of love. 
God's law has always been the love of God. It is always will be, it always has been, and always will be love. Somebody say love. If you look at every commandment that God has ever, ever put before us, all those ten commandments, if you break them down into three different categories, it will break down like this. The love that you have for God, the love that you have for self, the love that you have for your neighbor. But the foundation of those commandments that God gave to Moses, please understand me, the foundation of that is the love of God. And he's telling all the priests, he said, because you're not teaching the right message, my people perish, they're destroyed, because you're not teaching what it is that you're supposed to be teaching. Amen? That word destroyed, if you look it up in the Hebrew, it comes from the word dama, which simply means, and you watch this now, it means to make dumb. It means to make silent. Amen? And what he's literally communicating to the priest, he's saying, how in the world are they going to have any praise if they don't hear good news? How will they have any worship if there's no adoration that comes from the good news that they hear? Are you listening to me? He said, because you're not teaching what it is you're supposed to be teaching, which is the love of God and the message of love, because of that, my people don't have no praise, they don't have no worship, they don't have no testimony, and because they don't have no praise, worship, or testimony, they don't have no witness. Are you listening to him? He said they are cut off because you're not teaching the right word. Amen. And we have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we have to get solidified in the right gospel, in the right doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, in the doctrine of grace, in the doctrine of peace is the same exact doctrine. And God has been trying to get us to, to understand this for a long time. He said, guys, you got to get this to the point to where now you know it in your knower. To where nobody can come and fool you with another doctrine. Why? Because there's only one. Amen. God's doctrine is the only one. Pay attention to this. Watch this. The Mosaic law derived from the law of God. It's just that the sin nature that was on the inside of man messed up the Mosaic law. Amen. But it's important that you know the difference. One is founded upon the love of God and the other one is based on your behavior. And he says to the priest, he said, because you're not teaching the right law, dear God, my people are perishing every single day. They're not developing like they're supposed to be developing. And their witness is not being amplified like it's supposed to be amplified. If their witness is not being amplified, how in the world can they win those people who are in the dark and perverse world into the marvelous light if their witness is not amplified? Amen? You see, all these things go hand in hand. But we're not looking at it like that. So we, as born-again believers, we got to get to the point to where we know this stuff and we know it in our knower. And because we know it in our knower, now because of what I know, I begin to grow. And now because of what I, because of what I know, it begins to show. Amen? But before it gets to that point, you got to know it on the inside of your knower. Let me solidify you in some things. I want you to turn with me to the book of John. Chapter 19. Turn there if you will. Are y'all flowing with me? Praise God. You know the word of God it says, in all you're getting, get understanding. Amen. We believe in rightly dividing the word of God. For you visitors who are here, one thing that you're going to get here is you're going to get the word of God. Amen. We believe in teaching the word of God. You know, every now and then I might hoop just a little bit. Amen. <laughs> All right, now, don't, don't start, don't start. John chapter 19, verse 30. It reads this way. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. 
Now it is necessary for you to solidify this and know this in your knower that everything, everything that pertaineth to life and godliness concerning you, when Jesus said that it was finished, he factored it in. You see, we're working trying to meet our needs when he said the needs that you're trying to meet were already met. You got to hear that again. We're working on our jobs and everything else trying to meet our needs, not realizing that the needs that you're trying to meet were already met when he said that it is finished. It is finished means exactly what it is that he said, but we just got to believe. In other words, we got to know it in our knower. Because when you know it in your knower, you will no longer strive or toil within self-effort trying to meet your own needs. That's why the Word of God says it in the book of Matthew chapter 6. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. In other words, when I embraced you, when I received you as my own, I took full responsibility of you. And whatever your needs are, I'm going to make sure that you have whatever it is that you need. So we don't have to go out trying to meet our own need because whenever you try to meet your own need, you rob God from out of the privilege of taking care of his own. And the church said. You see, our mind was conditioned totally opposite. Our mind was conditioned in what's called the law of self-preservation to where, shoot, I got to take care of me. Amen. I got to take care of me in minds. Amen. And I'm here to tell you that is backwards. He's saying, dear God, all you got to do is redirect your focus. Book of Matthew 6, redirect your focus on the kingdom of God. He said, if the need crops up on the inside of you, if you got more money in the, in, 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 more bills in the mailbox than you have money in the bank, he says, redirect your focus because the devil's trying to derail your faith. Redirect your focus because the devil's trying to derail your faith. Keep your mind focused on the kingdom of God. In other words, you've got to know in your knower, whenever an issue arises in your life, you have to say what the word of God says. Father, you said you'll supply all my needs according to your riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. And because I know that in my knower, I'm in full expectation that that's going to manifest in my individual life because your word says so. I'm settled in it. I'm rooted in it. I'm grounded in it. Glory to God. It must come to pass. Are you listening to me? Because all he said that we have to do is believe it. Many born-again believers, we are still engaged in self-effort. And that's why the unmerited, unearned, and undeserved favor of God does not work in our individual lives because we're still engaged in self-effort. We don't even realize that we're engaged in self-effort. I'm here to tell you I've been working since I was 12 years old. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, sometimes it's hard to, to stop working. Sometimes when things are not working like they should be working, it's just within that human nature to, well, I got to do this over here in order to make it work. He said, no, 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 no. All you got to do is rest in me. He says, rest in me. Keep your mind on the kingdom of God. Know in your knower. What did he say in the word of God? He says, be still and know that I am God. Amen. And he said, dear God, if I take care of the birds of the air, why don't you think I'll take care of you? Are you much not that? You know what he said? You have to know your value. He said, are you not much more important than they? He said, you got to know your own value. You have to know it inside your knower. Not just by your head because of what the Word of God says, but now you have an epiphany on what the Word of God says to where now the light bulb has gone off. Glory to God. And when the light bulb goes off, please understand me, that's when things begin to manifest. Why? Because it's being solidified and compressed with belief to the point to where now God said, I receive it. Now, now the manifestation of what you believe in me for will begin to manifest like you're believing me. Amen? Did y'all get that? He said, all we got to do is believe. He said, he ain't, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, all you got to do is know that in your knower. He said, all you got to do is, he said, I'll supply all your needs. He said, all you got to do is know that in your knower. What is that? Know that in your knower is all about belief that's solidified on the inside of a born-again believer. We do not have a sin problem in the body of Christ. We have a belief problem. 
in the body of Christ. We have a hard time believing. Because some people think that it's, you know, it's real easy to believe. No, it's easy. You have to work on believing the way that I'm telling you to believe. Amen. It's not just, ooh, voila, no, no, no. You've got to actually exercise yourself in believing God. Amen. Receiving what he's saying, glory to God. And believe him at his word. Amen. Why do you have to work on it? Because for a long time, you didn't believe in nobody but yourself. Amen. You know how we used to do. We were trained and conditioned from a pup to believe in yourself. Amen. But check this out. The Bible doesn't say nothing about believing in yourself. Amen. The Bible says everything about believing in Jesus. But we've been believing, we've, we've been conditioned in selfism, we've been conditioned in worldly philosophies, we've been conditioned in all that other stuff. Now, we got to recondition our mind, we got to brainwash ourselves with what the Word of God says, to the point to where now, I'm believing in Christ. Amen? Where now, I know it in my knowing, because I know it in my knowing, it's going to manifest just the way that I know it. Turn with me to the book of Mark, real quick. Mark chapter 4. Is this helping anybody? The reason why the thing that you believe in God for did not manifest the way that you were expecting it to might not have been that you were believing for the wrong thing. It just might mean that you weren't believing right. Amen. You had it on the inside of your head, but it was not in your heart. Check this out. When it's in your head and it's in your heart, now you have what's called the power of agreement. <laughs> Amen. To where now you can see the manifestation of what you're believing God for. Amen. You're believing God for healing in your body. Guess what? It has to become more than head knowledge. You got, if the doctor has told you anything about your body and he's trying to say that there's something in your body that's not supposed to be there, I, I want you to know all you got to do is get the word of God on it and you begin to meditate on it and get that word on the inside of the incubator. Once it's on the inside of the incubator, then the incubator will do its job. It will always bring forth the life of whatever it is that you allowed on the in incubator. Amen. And now that you have the power of agreement between your head and, to, and your heart, now the healing begins to invade your whole body to where what the doctor said now becomes false because the Word of God is always true. And the church said, are you listening to me? The Word of God is true, glory to God. It says, and that's what we have to get in our knower. We have to get it solidified in the city of our soul, glory to God. We have to get that word on the inside. Everybody there? All right. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 4, verse 24. I'm reading out of the Amplified. Watch what he says. He says, And he said unto them, Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought in study you give to the truth you hear will be measured, that will be measured, that, that will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given unto you who hear. Now you got to hear what he's saying. He said, whenever you study the word of God and hear the word of God, and it begins to get to the point to where now it's on the inside of your knower, because you can't give thought and study without getting to the point to where you have a revelation. Thought and study gives birth to revelation. Amen. He says when you give thought and study to any truth of the word of God, please understand me. He says then it will bring forth manifestation. It's directly linked to what you're believing me for. He said it will bring forth manifestation in your life. Whether that manifestation is intangible or tangible, he said that it will bring forth manifestation. Why? Because now what I heard, I know it. I know it in my knower now. Amen? In other words, what I'm sharing with you is not just information now, but because of your own personal study, it now becomes your revelation. Amen? You got to hear that by the Spirit. 
we have to get to the point to where we're not just hearing the word of God, but we are doers of the word of God. Praise God for those people who have read the Bible 50 times. Amen. But please understand me. If you're not walking it out, you, you didn't read it right. Something happened in the process of you reading the Bible. <laughs> it wasn't read right. Are you listening to me? So we got to go back and we got to dissect the Word of God. We got to rightly divide the Word of God. We got to understand the doctrines of the Word of God. Because one thing that he's talking about, that the truth will make you free, they're not just talking about the whole, how many of you know that the whole Bible is true? Not a showing of hand. Whole Bible is true. But how many of you know that the Old Testament, Old Mosaic Law was not designed to make you free? So when he's talking about the truth of God will make you free, there's a part of the Bible that he wasn't talking about. He's talking about the message about God loving you beyond the shadow of a doubt. The message of love, glory to God. And once you understand how much God loves you, how much God cares for you, that he can't stop loving you, he said it'll make you free, glory to God. It'll remove your burdens and destroy your yokes, glory to God. He said it'll make you free. He said it emancipates you, glory to God. Why? Because now I know how much he loves me. And because how much he loves me, he will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He'll bless me exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or think. He'll heal my body, glory to God, because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt how much he loves me. And because of that, it has made me free. It has made me free. To where now, dear God, every promise in the Word of God works. Like it's supposed to work. Why? Because I got a revelation. I got a revelation now that He really does love me. In the, in the book of Matthew, uh, Jesus comes to the disciples and the, the, He asks, Who do men say that I am? And some say that. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're Isaiah. Some say you're this. Some say you're Ray Ray. But please understand me. Peter said, he responded and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus responded unto him and said, You know, it was not flesh and blood that revealed this unto thee, but it was my Father who art in heaven. He says, And now that you know that, now we can get started. Amen. He can't do too much until your belief is solidified, until you know in your knower who he is, glory to God. You'll never know who you are until you know who he is, glory to God. We got to get that solidified on the inside of us. We got to know it on the inside of our knower because whenever we know it on the inside of our knower, we will not be fooled, we will not be bamboozled, we will not be tricked any, mo any longer in our lives. The devil's job, just, hold on, let me tell you that, because the devil is not your friend. He's not your friend. Amen. It doesn't matter how bad of a sinner that we might be, he is not your friend. Amen. His job is to fool you, trick you, and bamboozle you into thinking that what Jesus did on the cross did not include you. And if he can fool you into thinking that, guess what? Your faith won't work. Your faith don't work, guess what that means? Your, your witness doesn't work. And when your witness doesn't work, you can't fulfill the ultimate objective, which is bringing those people out of the dark in the marvelous, in, into the marvelous light. Amen? Everything is linked and tied together. Amen? And we have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's time for us to get angered in the things of God. Please hear me. It's no longer, it's not time to play church. It's not time to play church. No, it's time to be in church. It's time. The Word of God says, you know, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some when you see the day approaching. In other words, the day he's talking about is already here. Amen. And it says, forsake not the assembling of yourself. Amen. God knows how to bless you whenever you are congregated together. Glory to God. The power of God can fall in here at any time, glory to God. Because we are a people who are at one with him, amen? All right, watch this. In the book of John, chapter 6, 
Is this helping anybody? God is a good God, amen. Now watch what he says. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. Uh, uh Uh-huh. It reads this way. Chapter 6, verse 27. It reads this way. Watch this. He says, stop toiling and doing and producing for food that perishes and decomposes in the using, but strive and work and produce rather for the lasting food which endures continually unto eternal life. The Son of Man will give, furnish you that, for God the Father has authorized and certified him and put his seal of endorsement upon him. Verse 28. Then the disciples said, What are we to do that we may habitually be working the works of God? What are we to do to carry out what God requires? And Jesus replied, This is the work the service that God asks of you, that you believe in the one whom he has sent and cleave to, trust in, rely on, and have faith in his messenger. The disciples came to Jesus and said, you know, what, what, you know, we're used to working, but now that we're in a whole new dispensation, what are we going to do now? Since we're not supposed to be working the way that we used to be working, now that we're in this dispensation, what are we going to do to work the works of God? What do we have to do to shift our paradigm? Amen? He says, the only thing that you have to do, considering that everything else was already finished, considering I've done everything for you, he said, all you got to do is believe. He said, all you have to do is know it in your knowing. Solidify it on the inside of you that everything that you need, everything that you want, everything that you desire has already been fulfilled before the foundations of this earth. He said, all you got to do is believe that it was done. And once you believe it, then the manifestation of what it is that you say you believe will begin to manifest in our individual life. Amen. He said, that's all we got to do. He said, we don't have to toil. We don't have to. He said, now, no. In verse 27, that's the first thing he started out with. He said, stop toiling in self-effort and doing all that other stuff that you were doing before. Why? Because there's a new paradigm. There's a paradigm shift. Amen. It's time to shift your methodology and embrace the new way of living. The new way of living is to believe. Everything that you need, everything that you want, everything that you could possibly desire came with the salvation package. Everything you can imagine, it came with the salvation package. He said, but dear God, it won't work if you don't believe it. It's not going to work if we don't believe. Amen. It won't work if it's not in your knower. Amen. Contrary to popular belief, listen to this, I'm, and I've said it before, you've got to hear it by the Spirit. Manifestation does not come from God. Manifestation comes from you. Amen. You've got to hear that by the Spirit. In other words, God does not rain anything that you're desiring from out of heaven when he's already put a little heaven in you. Did y'all hear that? In other words, whatever it is that you want on the end, whatever it is that you want to manifest on the outside, you got to sow the seed on the inside in order to see the manifestation on the outside. And once you sow what it is that you're desiring God for on the inside of the incubator, it'll get on the inside of the soil, glory to God, and it will begin to germinate, glory to God, and then the manifestation of what you're believing God will begin to come into your individual life. Amen? You got to hear that again by the Spirit. Check this out. Everything that you can imagine other than the birds, bees, and the deep blue seas, with God created. Everything else came through you. Everything, the building that you're in, it came through man. This pew came through man. Cars that are made came through man. Everything came. Yeah, you women, you're looking sad. I'm one man, man, same thing. Amen. You got to hear that about it. it came through us. 
Because God gave that to us as a gift, glory to God. And it's what enables us to be like him. He said, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. He said, how can you be like God if you ain't doing what he doing? He said, all you got to do is call those things that be not as though they were. You, but you got to know it on the inside of your knower because once you know it on the inside of your knower, you will compress it with that belief. And once it's compressed with belief, dear God, all of a sudden it's going to come out your mouth. The mouth speaks out of the abundance of the heart. And because you're speaking, that's the same thing that he said in Hosea. My people are made dumb because you're not teaching the right gospel. And if they don't have nothing to say, how can they see what they say? Are you listening to it? Most of the manifestation that you're believing God for has everything to do with your mouth. And the devil knows it. He knows that if you, if he's allowed to sow something into your heart or in, on the inside of your knower and you receive it and you embrace it and you allow it to pass the quality control point, he already knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that the process is going to work itself out. In other words, you're going to bring forth the manifestation what it is that you're allowed to get on the inside. And for the most part, the devil has been using our own He's been using us against ourselves. Where he'll solicit us with a thought and we'll just meditate on that thought and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you don't have no clue why you cussed that person out. You don't know why you slapped that person. Why you slapped that person? Why did you slap him? Because you slapped him because you meditated on it first. Nothing just up and slipped. No, it doesn't happen like that. No, it got on the inside. You allowed that thought to get on the inside Matter of fact, you meditated on that thing. And now that you meditated on that thing, I'm here to tell you all of a sudden something cropped up and you... Are you listening to me? That's how sin manifests. We think not... And, now, and it has everything to do with what you get or allowing to get on the inside of your knower. Knowing it in your knower has everything to do with watching what you're allowing to get on the inside of your knower. Amen. You want the right things on the inside. That's why Paul says it like this. Think on these things. Those things which are just, those things which are loving, those things which are a good report. Think on these things. Amen. He says, and the God of peace will be with you. Why is that? Because I'm getting those things on the inside of my knower. And as it's getting on the inside of my knower, guess what? It's changing me from the inside out. It's changing me to the point to where that itch to slap or cuss somebody out is no longer there. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> oh my God, I know some of these visitors like, dear God, is he for real? <laughs> Amen, glory to God, hallelujah. <laughs> I want you to turn with me real quick to the book of uh, Mark chapter 9. I believe in keeping it real and perfecting the saints, Amen. <laughs> You know some of them thoughts be coming up every now and then. <laughs> oh, get on your last nerve. And all of a sudden, that hand start trembling. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> every time you see him, your hand do like this. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. That's because you allowed that thought to get on the inside of your knower. Amen. We got to get into the Word of God so we can evict those thoughts. Amen. The devil is so powerless against you. To where he has to use you against yourself. Amen. He's powerless against you. He says, I now give you all the power over all the power of the devil. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. He tries to use you against yourself. It is a strategy that he has always used. He will always do the same thing. That's why the word of God says in the book of 2 Corinthians. You know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Why is that? Because he just revealed to every believer the very place that the devil will attack. He wants to attack your mind. Amen. So that he can get into that compartment that causes things to manifest and causes things to happen in your life. Amen. He wants to get into that imagery. Amen. And once he can get in there, dear God, he can, 
He can cause things to manifest through you because you gave him access to that area. Amen? All right, all right. Are y'all getting anything out of this? All right. Mark chapter 9, verse 23, uh, it reads like this. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things, somebody say all things, are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. What does that mean? All things are possible to him who allows the word of God to get on the inside of his knower. Everybody in here is believing God for some level of manifestation. You're believing God for something. Or you wouldn't be in church this morning. Amen. Please understand me. What you're believing God for, get it on the inside of your knower. Your knower represents your heart. Get it on the inside of your head. Get it on the inside of your heart. And now you have the power of agreement. And your heart will always work the way it's supposed to work because God created it. If man created it, it might not work right. <laughs> but God created your heart. It's always going to work right. But listen to me very carefully. The soil of your heart is amenable. And what that means is, no matter whether the seed is bad or whether it is good, if you allow it to get on the inside of the soil, your heart going to work right. It will still work right. Amen. That's why the Word of God tells us to guard your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart flows the issues of life. Whatever it is that you want to see manifest in life, it has everything to do with the contents of our heart. And the church say it. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we're getting ready to close this thing out. Praise God. In the book of Joshua 1 and 8. Say amen when you're there. Saints, this delivered us. Amen. Dear God, God is an awesome God. He wants us to win. He wants us to be uh, to triumph in life. And he says that you are more than conquerors. He said that you're an overcomer and everything else. Dear God, he's laid everything out there, but he says you got to know that in your knower. you got to know it in your knower that he will heal you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. you got to know it in your knower that he will never leave you destitute. He will never leave you barren. He will never leave you in defeat. He will never leave you in lack. you got to know that in your knower, glory to God. Once you know it and you know it, the devil can't come up to you and tempt you and say, if thou be the Son of God, he can't come up to you and fool you because you know it in your knower. Let me ask you this, drill, drill, and you can respond out loud. You ready? Uh, what is, what is uh, 6 plus 6? What? I thought it was 7. What? Oh. Are you sure it's 12? So that means somewhere along the line that what you, the knowledge that you received on how to work out that formula now became solidified in your heart to the point to where can't nobody convince you otherwise of what you said that you know. Are you listening to me? The Word of God works the exact same way. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt that 6 plus 6 is 12. No matter how I try to convince you, it is not seven. Because you're already solidified, you're already convinced. And once you're convinced of any area in the Word of God, the devil cannot fool you anymore. He can't do it. Amen? He can't do it. And that's where we have to get to where now, dear God, I know it in my nowhere now. It's not just, I'm not just celebrating Easter because it's a cute thing to do. No, I know exactly what happened. I know that he did that for me. I know that he did that so that I could be free, glory to God. So that I could receive salvation, glory to God. So that I can have eternal life, glory to God. I already know it. I'm settled in it. I'm rooted in it. I'm grounded in it, glory to God. And will not be moved. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Guys, we're radical about this thing, amen? We're excited about what God has done, glory to God! <laughs> we're excited about what He's done. <laughs> now, I haven't given my testimony in a long time, and I ain't going to give it now. But y'all have no idea where I came from. 
And we show sure glad that I'm not still there. Amen. <laughs> God is a good God. Full of grace and mercy. Glory to God. My, 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 my. All right, all right. Okay, let's close this thing out. Uh, Joshua chapter 1. Everybody there? In the Amplified, it reads like this. This book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your ways prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Did y'all hear that? He says that you shall meditate day and night. You can't meditate day and night without getting it on the inside of your knower. He says once you study the word, now you now you got to when you're reading the word of God, it's important to read the word of God from a pre-resurrection and post-resurrection mindset because we're each talking about the law in the book of Joshua. In order for it to be applicable to us, we have to know that he's talking about the law of grace. As the church said. Did y'all hear that? In other words, where he was talking about the law back then, please understand me, for us, it's the law of grace. This book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth. But we should meditate in that book. And as we meditate in that book, then all of a sudden it's going to get on the inside of my knower. And now that it's on the inside of my knower, dear God, I'm manifesting what's on the inside of me. I want you to hear this by the Spirit. Man does not necessarily get what he wants. But man gets what he is. We got to become it before we want to see it. Amen. In other words, the garden that you want and you're believing God for, please understand me, he's already taken that garden and he's put it on the inside of you. And there is no other fertile ground that can ever exist in the garden that he put on the inside of every born again believer. And he said, if you want anything in life, you got to get to the point to where the head knowledge becomes your heart knowledge. And now that that seed is saturated with belief, then all of a sudden manifestation will come. Amen. Whether it is intangible or tangible, it happens the exact same way. Amen. And in the book of Romans, you can turn there. I mean, you don't have to turn there and you can read it in your own time. In the book of Romans chapter 8. And he says, well, what shall we say to all these things? If God be for you, who can be against you? Glory to God. Because if he gave his son, why wouldn't he give you everything else? Glory to God. He's given you your needs. He's already healed your body. He said he's already uh, blessed you exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. Some of you came in here with an issue, came in here with a problem. Please understand me. He said, I've already factored all that in. Don't think in your mind or don't let the devil fool you into thinking that I left it out. No, every problem that every born again, this is how detailed God is. Every problem that any born again believer can go through. He said, I already factored it in over 2,000 years ago. And the church said, you got to know that in your knower. There's nothing that you can face in this life. That's why he says that no temptation, no test, no trial can come upon you except that which is common to man. With the temptation, I'll give you, I've already provided a way of escape. Why? He did that over 2,000 years ago. Amen. We always have a way out. That's why it happens like this. You know, when a righteous man falls seven times, you know, he can fall seven times and get back right back up. Why? Because he has that spiritual buoyancy that he needs in order to bounce back up. Glory to God. In the life of a born-again believer, there's no such thing as failure. Glory to God. You can't fail in Christ. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. Saints, it is time that we begin to get into the Word of God for our sake. Get into that Word. Show that Word on the inside of you. Get it to the point to where it's no longer just stuck in my head. Amen. But now it's on the inside of my heart. Now it's on the inside of my heart. Dear God, I'm beginning to see this thing working for me. It's working now. Amen. 
My healing works now. Glory to God. Did y'all learn anything this morning? Go ahead and stand to your feet. Give God some praise in here. Shout hallelujah. Mm. You know, I didn't say give me praise. I'm not looking for it. I said give God praise in here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Y'all praising him like you're sleepy. <laughs> Glory be to God. Father, we thank you. Can we just thank him where we are right quick? Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your many blessings. We thank you in the name of Jesus for your goodness and for your grace. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name that your word consistently prevails in every area of our lives. We thank you for knowing the number of hairs that is on our head in the name of Jesus, for blessing us exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your word will consistently prevail in our lives, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to have your way in here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We thank you. Can you just worship him where you are? Can you worship him where you are? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we release all of our cares onto you. All of our concerns, all of our issues, all of our problems, we just cast them onto you. Because we're in full confidence. And we trust that you will take care of all those cares. We don't, we're not equipped to carry them. Father, we thank you for it right now. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Those of you who are in here, if you have not accepted Jesus in your heart as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to go ahead and come up front right now in the name of Jesus. In fact, we're going to do it from where you are. If you don't know whether or not you're a born-again believer, with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you don't know whether or not you're born again this morning, I want you to lift up your hand where you are so that we can lead you into a prayer of salvation. Amen. Just hold up your hands where you are. Hallelujah. If you would like to recommit your relationship with the Lord this morning, I want you to hold your hands up where you are so that God can do a mighty work in your life. That relationship is the best relationship that you can ever have in your life. Amen. Those of you who are holding your hands up, I want you to repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for loving me before I even knew how to love myself. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your long suffering. From this day forward, I will spend time in your words, time in your presence, and time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. I want you to know if you came in those doors this morning and you had something going on on the inside of your body, I want you to know that God's healing anointing is going forth right now in the name of Jesus.